Ahoy there makers, Raspberry Pi have just released the updated AI hat, the AI hat 2. But what's new? Why did they update the previous version? And what can this hat do that the old one can't? Let's take a closer look. My name's Kevin, come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code, and have a whole load of fun along the way. The AI Hat Plus 2 is the next generation of AI accelerators from Raspberry Pi. Like the original AI Hat, it's an add-on board for your Raspberry Pi for providing AI capabilities. The AI Hat Plus 2 can now run large language models and large vision models. Let's dive deeper into that. Cloud AI is remarkable, but it's also a tether. The AI Hat Plus 2 enables local generative AI, leaving the main CPU and RAM free for the tasks. It has 8 gigs of onboard dedicated RAM for model usage, 40 tera operations per second or tops of int4 inference performance, and as a comparison, the Apple M4 can do 38 tops, and for vision performance, it's equivalent for 26 tops of the original AI Hat Plus. A set of sample LLMs have also been provided. I like the original AI Hat. The AI Hat Plus 2 communicates with the Raspberry Pi over Gen 3 PCIe interface. The latest Raspberry Pi OS automatically detects the AI Hat Plus 2's MPU processor and makes it available for AI compute tasks. The built-in RPI cam apps, the camera applications, support the module out the box. So over here on the Raspberry Pi, I've just booted this up and I've gone ahead and I've already installed all the software on this one. Very straightforward. I'm on a beta version of the uh, software, so uh, I can't show you the installation of that. It'll be very straightforward once the, uh, the board comes out. So I've, I've gone ahead and installed Olama. There's a special version of Olama that's optimized for use with the Halo. Halo is the name of the processor that the AI Hat Plus 2 uses. So if we run Halo Olama, we can now connect to that port and we can then start using the AI. So I'm over here now in Olama. This is the optimized version for the Halo chip and I've loaded up a couple of models. You can see the models there. We've got DeepSeek R1 Distill Quen 1.5 billion tokens. We've got the Olama 3.2, that's 3 billion tokens. Quen 2.5 Instruct Quen and there's also this Arena which is a comparison thing. So let's go for Quen2 and then let's, let's ask it for a piece of code. So write me a Python fast API app that can store birthdays of friends in a database. So one of the things that I immediately noticed with this when I was using it is there is a small lag between when you change models. So the models have to be loaded into the onboard RAM, the eight gig of RAM that the board comes with. So when you switch models, it does have to sort of do a bit behind the scenes, swapping out of uh, models. And if the models are quite large, that can take a couple of seconds, up to about 30 seconds is what I found. Once it's loaded that in though, it's quite performant. So we go, this is real time now. You can see there the text being generated. This is the Python app that I've asked it to generate. So it's created a fast API app. It's created a class called birthday, and then it's created a route for that birthday post. And that's simply it. Write a readme file for this code. See how it gets on with that. So again, there's about 30 seconds where it loads the new model into memory and you do pay a little price performance point for that. I think one of the disadvantages of it using the Gen 3 PCIe interface is that you can't store the Raspberry Pi OS and all your files on an NVMe drive. You have to use the SD card. Potentially, if you're using something like the compute module, then you could potentially use the onboard eMMC, which is a little bit faster than an SD card, but not quite as fast as a SSD. Here we go. So it's now creating a readme file for this. You can see this one is um, about the same speed as the previous model, maybe a tad slower. And that's because it's, uh, it's doing a bit more thinking when it uh, generates the text. This is pretty good. It's explaining how to uh, to use the app, what you need to do, calling the database file birthday.db and also a bit of boilerplate around how to run it. Perfect. And let's say review our code for any issues and suggest improvements to the code. The user provided a Python script using Flask and SQLite, but the current implementation seems incomplete or have some issues. So this is really detailed explanation. This is the distilled Quen using DeepSeek. So I'm quite impressed with the depth that it's going to in here. And you can see it's quite performant, it's quite quick at actually generating the text from that model. And if we also go back while it's doing this to the Raspberry Pi, let's open up another window. And if I just run HTOP, 
you can see that it's actually not really doing anything it's not using that much memory this this raspberry pi has only got two gigs of ram and it's not doing anything cpu wise the hat is handling all the model storage in ram and also all the processing for the large language model so you can see it's still generating explanations of that so overall quite impressed with the speed of uh, performance of that let's grab that code again let's just copy that Let's do a new chat that's using Llama and let's paste this in. Review this code. Okay, see how this gets on. Again, it's got to swap out the model. We can see that in action if we go back to the AI hat on here. Generation thread replacing model to and then the path of the uh, the model that we're replacing it to. So it can take up to 30 seconds to do that. Let's go back to our chat and we should see that. Uh, look at our code very, very shortly. Here we go. Code review and improvements. Here's an in-depth review. Now you can notice this is slightly slower than the other models and that's because it's twice as large. Larger models do take longer to process through. So this is still quite performant and it's also quite deep in its understanding and uh, its analysis of our code. So you get the idea, I'm gonna let, let this carry on now. This is a little bit slow for my liking just because it's taking a little bit longer to generate the code. So I probably would use a different model than this one for coding. Now here are the Halo demo apps. There's quite a few of them. This one is my favorite. You can actually get it to describe an image from some live video. So I'm gonna get it to run the, the chat program, VLM chat. Okay, what I'll do, I'm gonna hold this, uh, I'm gonna hold this little dog thing, see if it can recognize what on earth this is. I mean, it's not particularly recognizable, but hey. Now it says, what is the question? So I'm gonna say, describe the image. See what it says. So it's pretty quick, right off the bat. It says, the image shows a person in a blue t-shirt with a uh, design on a hat that includes a castle and a dragon. <laughs> Not sure where the castle and the dragon comes from. Uh, along with the text, the castle. Ah, it's the birds. That's what it's, that's what it's saying, the birds. I think it thinks it's a castle. The individual is holding a toy that resembles a dragon. The background appears to be an indoor setting, possibly a workshop. Jing got that right. Or a room with shelves and storage containers. The person is smiling. The overall look suggests a playful or creative atmosphere. Oh, so correct. You can ask further questions as well. Let's say how many people are in the picture. And then watch how quickly it is to respond. It's almost instantaneous. There's one person in the picture. Is the person happy or sad? The person appears to be neutral or slightly sad, as indicated by their expression of body language. And again, the picture depicts a person holding a small circuit board-like device that appears to be a Raspberry Pi. It's got it in one. The Raspberry Pi is a microcomputer that is often used for home automation, robotics, or the low-cost computing. In a plastic case might be just the, uh, the yellow header pins, perhaps, or maybe the sheen analysis I like this the image appears to represent a humorous or creative scene with the individual engaged in a diy project that involves raspberry pi that's pretty much spot on isn't it now, of course it can do all the things that the previous version did such as image detection segmentation pose estimation and my favorite depth depth perception a measure of the power usage when it was idle and then also when it was under load processing and request and the difference is about two watts which is pretty efficient for an AI hat. I thought the elephant in the room that we should talk about as well is AI slop. So AI is a tool like a pen or a paintbrush. How you use it decides whether you create a fine art masterpiece, a cartoon or a doodle, it's up to you. I think the AI slop problem that people are beginning to see online is due to a twofold issue. Companies jumping on the AI bandwagon, adding it to their products uh, to either be the first to market or just to keep up with the competition. And then there's the low energy users who just want to create something with very little effort. AI will help you generate things with low effort, but the value from that will probably be equally low so unless there is effort and intent put into this by the user to tailor and craft the output for their audience for the end user then it will be of little value so LLMs are great for summarizing large or complex pieces of text brainstorming ideas providing the initial structure and tidying up text like a spelling or grammar check on steroids and similarly large vision models are great at adding descriptions to an image taking the drudgery out of that and visualizing an image from a description which could be useful in the pre-visualization stage of a project Project, for example. Other issues with AI slop is the mandatory inclusion of AI features. Unlike some companies, Raspberry Pi have made this a modular add-on and you can choose whether you buy this and include this if you want. The AI Hat 2 can do all this locally without a cloud or subscription base and leaving your main processor and memory free to do other stuff. So if you compare this to a monthly subscription, a one-off cost is actually quite appealing. You pay $130, but that's yours for life. You don't need to keep paying £90 as I pay for Claude AI, the max 
model. I can do all my local AI stuff now on a dedicated machine and it's completely freeing up any other machine. So, so I think on the, on the face of it, that's quite a good value for money. That's my thoughts. That's my two penny th on uh, AI slop. So pros and cons. If you want a secure local generative AI, you can now run your favorite LLMs in your home lab and including fast local AI capabilities to including things like N810. Cons wise, price $130 might seem a bit expensive to begin with might be a little bit complicated to convert some of the models I've not tried that myself yet and some of the examples that they provide are a little bit limited there is also a bit of a cold start delay when you change a model it can take up to 30 seconds I think part of the issue there is that this is loading from an SD card rather than from a faster SSD for example so if you have a home lab I would say this is actually an essential I've got this installed now on my home lab and I'll be building this into some projects such as N810 for home automation so I'm hoping you enjoy this short video on the new AI hat 2 and I shall see you next time bye for now